Today on First Century Foundations, we ask, what did Jesus do in Nazareth? As I explore his first job as a carpenter, while Karen meets with King's School of Media to find out how young people are being trained for the next great missions field. And it's all coming up right now. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Amaral. And I'm Karen Amaral. Welcome to another edition of First Century Foundations. All season long, we've been looking at the culture of Jesus, mm -hmm. trying to find out how that culture made him who he was. And today, I think we're gonna ask a pretty fun question. Uh, we're gonna ask, what did Jesus do? Not what did he do when he woke up in the morning or right. how he ended his day, but what did he do for a profession? I mean, how did he earn his shekels? We wanna talk about that today. Yeah, well, we're gonna look at Mark chapter six. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked, what is this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. I mean, that's an awesome uh, portion of scripture because mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta remember that these are real people. Yeah. You know, we read the Bible a lot of times and we think, you know, this holy book and a holy place and a holy people. All they did was pray and all they did was go to the temple. Or... Yeah, and float around all day offering sacrifices. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were real yeah. people. And so, I mean, Jesus was a carpenter right here in Nazareth where we are. Mm -hmm. And then he comes back and now people are saying he might be the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So you could understand, uh, you know, why there, you know, this rejection is taking place. Yeah. So while we're here in Nazareth, we're gonna try to find out actually what did Jesus do? What kind of stuff did he work mm. with? Yeah, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm going mm. to visit uh, the media ministry of King of Kings community and find out what God is doing through them and how they're mm. getting the message of uh, the word out yeah. to people everywhere. Awesome, again, guys, we have a great show. Stay with us. Jesus was a carpenter for many years before he started his ministry. So today I'm in Nazareth at Nazareth Village to find out more about his first job. Well, hello there, sir. Hello. How are you, Majd? Good, how are you? Good, did I say that right? Yes, you did. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be back here at Nazareth Village. We, uh, we bring uh, groups here all the time and I've been here several times in the past. Uh, I have yeah. to say, I love working at this place. I've been doing this for, well, working as a guide here for nine years and uh, not a day passes by without me realizing something new. Today, we're, we're, wanting, we're asking the question of, you know, what would Jesus do? Uh, each show, we're, we're trying to, to teach people something about the culture of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been in here before, but is this kind of, was this normal to have in a village in Jesus' time, or? Uh, a carpentry shop, yeah. uh, probably yes. Okay. Uh, because you would have uh, carpenters were uh, working in a village. Uh, they're really needed, but they're not exactly just carpenters. Uh, they were, in fact, builders. Oh, okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about building houses, you're talking about stonework. Okay. Uh, that's the main materials in building houses, but you're not using only stone, you're also using wood. Wood is very important. I mean, even if you want to go back to the Old Testament, you read even about building the temple. Right. Uh, it mentions the types of wood used, like the cedar of Lebanon. That's uh, right. Uh, yeah. Cypress, which is just all over the place. Uh, that's, in fact, what's in the roof over here. This is oh, okay. uh, cypress. So uh, if you're building houses, you have to have skills working with wood. Okay, and this is kind of a, of a typical carpenter shop? Yeah, it would be typical. You have the tools you need, you have the room you need. Okay. Uh, so this is where the magic happens. This is where it happens. Well, can I make some magic? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not very handy at all, j j just so you know. So I'm going to rely on your skill. I, I will do my best. Mm -hmm. But uh, are there maybe some tools that we can work with and just kind of give people the, the, the idea of maybe some of the daily activity that Jesus, you know, did? Sure. Uh, well, you see, here they did not work, work on cabinets or furniture. Furniture okay. was minimal, cabinets. They did not have any. Right. Uh, so, okay, let's try and work with this piece of wood. Okay. Okay, this is cypress. It's very uh, thick, very hard wood. Okay. And uh, we're starting to cut through it now, mm. and it, this is gonna turn into a shuttle for the weaver. Oh, very cool. That's, so that, 
that came from that? Yeah, it's the same oh. wood. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. So to get to this, yeah. you'd get, you need to get this smooth. And uh, like today, they had the plane back then. Very cool. And that's what this does. This is very flat here, and it has a very uh, mm. little bit coming out here, the blade. Yeah. So you want to try this? Uh, sure, why not? So what you're so. going to do is just slide this like this. Okay. Okay. Just one continuous direction. Yeah. You see, uh, I already yeah. started working here. I'm gonna hold the table because this moves. It's been here for 13 years. It's been faithful, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go lighter. Go lighter. Don't push okay. too hard on on the. Yeah. Okay. So my goodness, this really gives an appreciation for how long things yeah. I would have taken to do. Yeah, you couldn't just go into uh, Ikea and buy stuff, you know? No, I think this is better quality, no. It is better no quality. No offense against Ikea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the tools that they use. One of the tools, yeah. Now, when I bring my groups through here, mm -hmm. uh, one of the favorites uh, is, the, is the drill. The drill, definitely. Because that, that, that can be tricky. My son's really good at it. Me, <laughs> not so much. But again, we'll, uh, we'll give it a shot. Okay. Well, this is a part of the drill. You have to twist it like I'm sure some people have seen this used in starting or something similar used in starting fires. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, but if you just put a drill bit on it or something that would act like mm -hmm. one, it would turn into a drill. So, are you a righty or a lefty? Uh, I'm a righty. Right. Okay. So hold this with your right hand Kay. and the top. Yeah. And just move it. Just make sure these are kept tight. Keep okay? them taut. Okay. Keep them tight. There you go. So just go in one direction. Or both. So you can reverse it? I, I do it one way so I could go Let's harder. Let's try. Yeah. There you go. Hey, look at me. <laughs> so what are we trying to do here? Nothing? Just seeing how it works? Yeah. Uh, you're just making a hole through the table. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's that's fine. okay? Um, yeah. Well, cool. This is a good start. What else would Jesus do? Well, you need yokes for donkeys. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, th that is very important. You know, most of the work in the field was done using donkeys. If you're going to attach whatever you're going to attach to the mm -hmm. donkey, you need yokes. Okay. Uh, so, for example, this is for a single donkey. Yeah, this okay. This goes around the neck, and uh, you attach this. For example, in our olive press, we have one of these. And okay. uh, whenever we need the donkey to move the crushing stone around, we have uh, one of these pieces of wood attached with the rope, and the donkey just... Uh, okay. Works if you See, need uh, more. But, but it's cool when you say the yoke because you know uh, in the new in the New Testament of the Gospels we hear even Yeshua Jesus mm -hmm. talking about the yoke. His my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Exactly. And we think of like an egg yoke. <laughs> we don't think <laughs> of what right of what an actual yoke yeah. was. Mm -hmm. But this was put on the animal, and it, to me it almost like symbolizes the the Torah because the Torah it, it cut, if you follow it it pushes you in the right direction. And this mm -hmm. yoke, when it's put on you, right, mm -hmm. it kind of helps you to go in the right direction. And Jesus, as a carpenter, he might have made dozens and dozens of yokes. And mm -hmm. so when he said, my yoke is easy, he knows what he's he talking about. He knew exactly. What, and that's cool. He knows his stuff. Yeah, well, that's great. Or even uh, when it talks about uh, being uh, under a yoke with, like, let's say, a believer. You know? Oh, yeah. So that is important. This is for one donkey. You know, okay. One donkey will not I'm be able to uh, pull a plow on his own. Okay. Let me show you this. This here is a yoke for two donkeys. Or two animals. It's just kind of okay. stuck here. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. So two. For two. So you attach the plow here right. or the cart, whatever. Now. If, here, let's be donkeys. Or let's show the people. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's here. do that kind of. So, so kind of like this. Yeah. And I, now I'm, see, I'm sure I can't you're stronger look than left I am. To right. <laughs> yeah. But here's the problem. You can't look to the right. <laughs> I can't look to the right either or left. Now, if you're strong, well, uh, I bet you are stronger than uh, me. Let's go with that, okay? Uh, yeah. Thank you. So uh, you're going to be pulling harder, right? Right. So <laughs> if I'm going ahead of you, yeah, I'm going to pull you in the wrong direction. And you're going to just turn. Yeah. You know what? I'm, yeah, I have not know See? where to go now. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we're attached. <laughs> let's take this off. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, you can. If you're under the same yoke, you're going the the same direction. You cannot go a separate way. You're just attached to that. It's See, hard to get out of that. That is very, very cool. Because in the West, again, we hear, don't be unequally yoked. And we mm -hmm. don't know what that means. It's very important. If you're not at the same place spiritually and in your faith, mm -hmm. one can pull you in the wrong direction or one can get left behind or get hurt because you need to be moving at the same pace. Exactly. That's very cool. Thanks, man. So there's just so much to learn. At. We tend to think of Jesus more 
of a God, and f we forget just how human he was. Yeah. I mean, if he lived today, his life would not be that different than ours. I mean, he would have went to school. He would have had to have a job. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, he had to help supporting the family some way uh, or another. So uh, his mm -hmm. life was not different than... Uh, than the lives that they lived at the time. I would say the only difference was in sin. He did not sin. Yeah. We know that. But other than that, everything else. He took part in community events. I mean, I mean he was polite. Uh, we know that at least. You yeah. Know? So <laughs> if, if someone needs help, he would help them out. Yeah. Uh, if uh, they're uh, celebrating, I mean, the wedding in Cana. Yes. I Which mean, isn't too far there. from here, yeah. Cana. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people in, in this country, you know, they, they have this uh, statement against uh, weddings and all that. Like, Jesus was at a wedding. I mean, th that was a part of the daily life. I mean, if it's socially acceptable mm -hmm. and it's okay with the Bible. Yeah, so. I think it's really cool, you know, that the Bible says that we have a great high priest who identifies with us in our exactly. humanity. Yeah. You know, I mean, waiting in line and somebody cuts in front of you, how do I act? Just small, simple daily things. Yes. And, you know, just learning these few things has been really cool. And we talked at the beginning that it's not just wood mm -hmm. that a carpenter would, would deal with. What, what's the other uh, major item that a carpenter would work with in those days? Stone. Stone, okay. Stone is available just a lot. You know, there, there's a lot of stone in the Galilee because it's full of mountains and hills. Right. And, and that means that the soil is already washed down. They could easily go to a hillside, mountainside, quarry the stone out and work with it. Very cool. Awesome. Listen, guys, after the break, we're going to come back a little bit later and we're going to learn something else and talk about some other stuff that Jesus did on a daily basis. We're going to work with stone. Yeah, cool. Coming up, Karen talks with King's School of Media to see how young people are being trained to carry the gospel around the world through media. And later, I rock the way Jesus would have rocked, working with stone. For 2,000 years, man has been studying the life and words of Jesus. But in our modern culture, can we truly understand what he really meant? Now we can. Joe Amaral's book, Understanding Jesus, removes the veil of history and brings us greater understanding of the time and culture that Jesus and the authors of the Bible lived in. In Understanding Jesus, we study the feasts of the Lord as Jesus celebrated them and find valuable insight into God's prophetic timetable throughout history. Knowing more about this ancient culture will give you accurate insight into the teachings of Jesus and will take your faith to a whole new level. And this life-changing book can be yours for just $20. Call today and order your copy of Understanding Jesus by Joe Amaral, 1-877-628-2800, or visit us online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com. Today I'm on my way to Jerusalem to visit Greg Williams at King of Kings Community in their media ministry where we're going to find out what God has done and what he's doing. We founded King School of Media in the winter of 2009 and God laid it on my heart. Uh, a year before to start this media and film school. And he also, at the same time, was laying it on Pastor Wayne and Vaco's heart that someone had prophesied a year previous that they were supposed to start a uh, film and television school. So what year did you begin uh, the School of Ministry here? Y you know, in 2009, we started King School of Media and it's grown from just a few students to now we have 13 students and we've had two graduating classes already. And uh, our whole goal and vision is to train up believers who can be salt and light in the entertainment industry here in the Middle East and around the world. And also, the second fold is to send out, I guess you could call it media missionaries of sorts, so, you know, that they could take the Word of God and, and spread it through media to their cultures. And we have students, we've had students from Fiji, Canada, America, uh, Kenya. We've had students from all around the world in the Middle East. We have uh, some of our students are from Bethlehem, uh, some of them for from East Jerusalem, some of them are from Haifa, and all over Israel. So essentially what your ministry is doing is taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Yeah, absolutely. We believe that it's, it's absolutely important, you know, as we read it even in Revelations, that, that in the last days, like, knowledge will increase, and, and pretty much communication is going to be spread instantly around the world. We believe that it's part of the prophetic fulfillment. So that's our whole goal and 
and hope is that we can raise up that generation of young people that can shine God's light through uh, media, which can reach places that no one else can reach by foot, where the gospel has a hard time penetrating. <laughs> Internet is accessible to everyone in the world. So tell us, where are we right now? Well, King School of Media has been expanding, like, and God has been really blessing us like huge with uh, really talented students and a lot of interest from you know, around the world. And of course, that means we're growing, and that means we need bigger facilities, and we need more facilities for us to, to be able to create. And uh, so right over here, we have five edit bays that we've just you know, started construction on, and we've been building over this, uh, this last few months. What would you say would be one of your main prayer requests that uh, people at home could maybe? Yeah, I, I would say one of the main prayer requests that I would have, that I would love for your viewers to pray for would be, really for God to raise up laborers that can enter the harvest field and, and that God would inspire the ones that are already out there. And uh, also to pray that God would raise up more people, that there would be a positive and uh, Messiah-centered voice that's coming out through, uh, through media here in, in Israel and around the world. It was wonderful to meet with Greg today and find out what God is doing through this media ministry. And I hope that you were touched by it as well. If you'd like to get involved and learn more about this ministry, you can log on to our website. You can call our office. You can also receive the Israel Prayer Watch and learn more about the ministry and what God is doing there. To make a donation or learn more about this ministry and the Israel Prayer Watch, visit us online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com or call 1-877-628-2800. Okay, Maj, we know that the, the village here, Nazareth Village, is, is you know, fairly modern because you guys have recreated stuff, mm -hmm. but it's built on ancient land from, from the beginning of time. It was always here. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just amazing. Uh, I was just reading the research that they've done here, the, the stuff that they found, whether it's broken Roman glass, shards of pottery, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm always into archaeology. Okay. Uh, personally, and uh, it's a good place to live if you're into archaeology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but just the quarries that they discovered here. Mm. Uh, it makes perfect sense. A hillside being used for a quarry. The soil is already washed down. Uh, uh, the rock is already exposed. Yeah. You could easily just quarry it out. And uh, if you look over here, this yeah. is amazing. I, I asked about this. I thought, okay, did someone make this out like this circular for Nazareth for, Village? Yeah, for Nazareth. Yeah. They're like, no. And uh, I mean, looking at at it. You know, I don't know for sure, mm -hmm. but it could uh, very possibly be uh, a place where they got out a stone for uh, an olive press. Oh, that's pretty cool. Because, yeah, it has that, that round shape, and they were, they were massive stones, and Big you had the donkeys beast. that would go and turn them. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, this might have been a place where they got out the stone for that. Uh, that's th pretty cool. For sure, you can say for sure that they used stones uh, mm. cut out from this area in building houses in the old Nazareth. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. So, so Jesus then knew a lot about working with stone. We talked about a earlier, lot, yeah. not just wood, but stone. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it would be cool because we're talking about what did Jesus do or what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. He would work with stone as a mason. Exactly. So I thought maybe you can give me a little uh, Mason 101, <laughs> if that's possible. Well, let's try that. Um, okay. Well, first of all, know your stone. Okay. Okay. So three comp or stones that you see in archaeology in the Galilee. Uh, if you're in the Sea of Galilee area, there's basalt stone. But, yeah. It's very hard. It's that volcanic black, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's one type. Uh, that's what most of Capernaum or the ruins yes. uh, are made of. That's right. Uh, there are two other, one, other ones that are kind of connected together. The limestone, which is what you see over here. Uh, it's kind of soft. I mean, it, it really is soft. I could literally oh, you can just see it here. Yeah. kind of destroy it with my finger. Yeah. There you go. It yeah. just... Yeah. yeah. It's just okay. very soft. Yes. And then there's this. This is nari. 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 Stone. That's what archaeologists uh, call it. Okay. So this is harder than uh, limestone. Some say it is a type of limestone, but it's more reliable when you're building houses. It's not going to just uh, disintegrate because of the rain and the heat. And oh, all okay. That. Uh, so this will be a little harder to work with than uh, limestone. You want to give it a shot? Uh, sure, why not? So. Let's say you're going to try and get this part off here and kind of uh, dress it so it, okay. it fits nicely in a wall. Okay. So you would start making a crack here. Okay, so just kind of go across. Yeah.
Yeah, I wonder what they uh, did for safety glasses back then. Yeah, I was wondering that. See how committed I am to the show? I just got a piece <laughs> of stone in my eye. <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you like that? Is it coming? I mean, it's going to take a while. Obviously, we're not going to go through it, but it just gives you an idea. It was a lot of work. Definitely a lot of work. You know, this blows my mind, though, because uh, we've done lots of shows down in Jerusalem about the temple and Herod building mm -hmm. the stones. Then you walk by through the Western Wall tunnels, and you see hundreds of stones, and you don't even think about it. Now, having done like five seconds worth of work, <laughs> my goodness, you realize how much work went into the creation of that temple. And it makes you think, how could they make the stones just so level, so straight? I mean, they, they didn't have... The beveled it, edges are perfect. They just fit perfectly. And that, that just blows my mind. Yeah, well, and I've said this before, you know, when Jesus was in Jerusalem and he said, you know, tear down this temple and I'll, I'll rebuild it in three days. They must have been thinking, how arrogant. You know how long it took Herod <laughs> to build this thing, and you're just going to build it up in three days? And it's not only that. I mean, they knew he's a builder. Yeah. I, mean, he, uh, I mean, he could probably build it, okay, with the help of a few others. <laughs> a few uh, others. And he knew he had the knowledge to build it, but, yeah, as you said. Yeah, well, you know what? This has been a real great learning experience. Thank you so much, Maj, for, for showing us, first mm -hmm. of all, about how uh, Jesus, uh, as a carpenter, would have worked with wood, but also would have worked with stone. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you guys have gotten a little bit of a more, a broader perspective on what Jesus did when he lived here in this time. What Would Jesus Read? The Daily Devotional Book by Joe Amaral. Since the destruction of the first temple nearly 3,000 years ago, the Jewish people have used a system of reading weekly portions of the Bible in an effort to preserve the scriptures. This same system was in place during the time of Jesus. And now, with this daily devotional book by Joe Amaral, you can follow and practice the very same devotional system that Jesus used. This book is designed to help you read the Bible daily with a first century mind bringing you greater insight into the mind of our Lord as you read what He read. Call the number on your screen now for your very own copy of What Would Jesus Read for just $25. 1-877-628-2800 or order online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com. What Would Jesus Read by Joe Amaral. We're waiting to hear from you. Call today. This is one of my favorite things about doing this television program is that I get to be hands-on, you know, uh, as a Bible college student, as a pastor, yeah. you're always studying, studying and reading and learning and, and watching. But to be able to come to Israel and to a really cool place like this, Nazareth Village, and hands-on uh, to get an idea of what Jesus what did. What maybe Jesus did, yeah. Yeah, that, that was really cool. And, and just understanding the whole concept, Karen, mm -hmm. of, of not only working with, with wood, Mm -hmm. You know, but working with, with, with stone. stone. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you've seen those bumper stickers. My boss is a Jewish carpenter <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Again, we let Hollywood uh, paint for us who mm -hmm. he was. There's this gentle, you know, fair-skinned Jesus with, you know, manicured hands. But, I mean, my goodness, to work with that on work a daily basis. Stone, I mean, rough on your hands. You would have manly hands. Yeah. And I got thinking about, about stone mm. and when he was in Jerusalem he made a comment I think it was to the Pharisees or the Sadducees and um, they were kind of giving him a hard time and he said I'll tell you what you destroy this temple and I'll build it again mm. in three days I mean mm. could you imagine what they must, what have, been they must freaking have thought out. <laughs> well like excuse me yeah, yeah we know you that you're a builder about? and that yeah. you're good but come on Her Herod's been building this for you know yeah. however and you're still you're still going mm -hmm. and so just seeing that side of him and understanding that here he was he'd prepared 30 years with his earthly father you know for three mm -hmm. and a half years of ministry and it's funny in modern day we do that differently we do three years or maybe four of yeah. preparation for 30 years of ministry yeah it was really cool you yeah. know and we got talking about how you know God the Creator you know sent his son you know, to the earth, yeah. and then the sun, while he was here, he was a creator as well. He created these things, and, and mm -hmm. he worked with his hands. And just to understand the human side of Jesus, because mm -hmm. we forget about that. 
Yeah. You know, Christians are okay with the divinity of Jesus, but when you talk about his humanity, you talk about his mother, his father, his brothers, his sisters, mm -hmm. people start to get a little freaked out by that, but no. He came in full human form to be able to identify with us in our humanity. And I don't find that offensive. I actually find that, you know, I find that encouraging to know mm -hmm. that, you know, he wrestled with a lot of stuff that, that I wrestle with, that you wrestle with, that you wrestle with. Right. And for me, that's really cool. So learning about that, the creativity that he had while I was here on the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, it was interesting to be with King of Kings community and their media department and meeting with Greg and finding out all about that creativity that they're uh, doing right now. And it's so neat because when yeah. I think of, you know, the old way of, you know, you'd hand out a gospel tract or something like that. One person. One person. <laughs> but here they're impacting like thousands and thousands of people with oh, yeah. the media ministry and they're able to touch so many more than what we could ever think or imagine. It's just like that. Just like that, yeah. Because, I mean, YouTube is a big sensation and all these other forms of media. Social are media, such, social all media, that stuff. Yeah. yeah I, I thought it was cool, more. sweetie, that, you know, we're talking about what Jesus constructed, you know, in the past. And yeah. here you were uh, interviewing with them in, in, in Jerusalem. Oh, what they're constructing. Their place is under yeah. construction. Yeah. yeah, it is. And they definitely need help there. Um, they're really needing some help to, yeah. you know, get everything finished and, and looking great and uh, functional for that type of ministry that they want to do and being able to get mm -hmm. the message out even further. That, that, that's the key. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they can't do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people will come up to us and say, you know, thank you, Joe and Karen and Clyde and Mary, and thank you to First Century Foundations for all that you do. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel bad taking that, that thanks because it's not us. Mm -hmm. you know? We're the ones who send. We send it. Yeah. It's 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 the viewers. It's yeah. you guys who, yeah. who see the ministries. You get the Israel prayer watch, and, and God speaks to your heart. Mm -hmm. It's not us, you know, begging or asking or talking. It's God who touches your heart, and you say, you know what? I love what they're doing in Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. I love that young people are reaching the next generation with the gospel in such a creative and powerful yes. way. And there's lots of ways that people can get a hold of us. Yeah, they can visit our website. You can call our office. You can sign up to receive our Israel Prayer mm -hmm. Watch. You'll, you'll get that every two months along with our newsletter and find out what God is doing in the land. Find out their praise reports, their prayer requests, their needs, everything. everything. It would be really great to be in touch with you. Yeah, and the cool thing is that as you continue to watch the program, you'll be exposed to more and more ministries. And when you mm -hmm. get the Israel Prayer Watch, you'll say, hey, Karen, talk to that guy. Yeah. Hey, that's that guy who's doing this. So it's a really great way to connect with us. Yeah. And now speaking of connections, Karen and I, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. There's a lot of ways to stay in touch with us. We love to hear from you and get comments from you. And again, guys, the whole reason why we do this ministry mm -hmm and the show is to take you as believer, believers to help you understand the, the Hebraic or the Jewish foundations of Christianity. And as we do that, we better understand Jesus. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Shalom. Uh, here, and it has a very uh, mm. little bit coming out here, the blade. Yeah. So, you want to try this? Uh, sure, why not? Okay, so what you're going to do... Do you have bandages do, nearby, just in case? Cause I, you don't need that. No? Okay. <laughs> First century bandage is like yeah. a bit of sheepskin around. <laughs> yeah, well, we have rope here, so... So I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I won't bleed out, okay. So. Like